Hello and welcome to FP Live. I'm Ravi Agrawal, Foreign Policy's Editor-in-Chief. Will the Middle East erupt into full-scale war? This isn't a new question. It's been on everyone's minds since October 7, when Hamas attacked Israel from Gaza. This question has been more and more salient as two other Iran-backed groups, Hezbollah in Lebanon and the Houthis in Yemen, have been attacking Israel regularly. And the question is all the more important now, after a deadly strike on an Iranian diplomatic compound in Damascus on April 1st. Tehran responded to that last weekend by attacking Israel with hundreds of armed drones and missiles. It was the first ever direct assault from Iranian soil. Israel and its allies largely thwarted that bombardment on April 13, and U.S. President Joe Biden has urged Israel to take the win. But Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu says Israel will do everything necessary to defend itself even as Tehran threatens further escalation if Israel responds. So, are Iran and Israel on the brink or merely returning to the deterrent strategies of a long shadow war? What domestic pressures may force each leader's hand? And let's not forget, what about Gaza? I'm joined today by two people who've been closely following the turmoil in the region. Suzanne Maloney is an Iran expert who has advised both Democratic and Republican administrations. She's written or edited three books on the country, the most recent of which is The Iranian Revolution at 40. She's the vice president and director of the foreign policy program at the Brookings Institution. Suzanne, welcome to FP Live. Thanks so much, Ravi. I'm glad to be here. It's our pleasure. So... I wanted to discuss, Suzanne, Tehran's logic in its attack last weekend. There have been two broad schools of thought here. One is that Iran wanted to cause real damage to Israel, reestablish deterrence, and that's why it attacked with such a substantial arsenal of weapons. The other school of thought is that Tehran was actually very calibrated. It waited two weeks after Israel's strike on the diplomatic compound in Damascus, the air assault was both telegraphed in advance and pretty easily repelled. These aren't just black and white schools of thought, of course. There's gray in between. How do you see it? Well, I think there's some element of truth in both of those interpretations. Um, it's quite clear that the Iranians um, sought to make sure that the region was aware, and by extension, uh, the United States was aware that it was planning something quite significant and that it was going to hit Israel directly. So that was, I think, well known and fairly clearly communicated in the run up to the attack. Uh, they also took their time, which um, I, you know, is actually somewhat um, normal for the uh, Revolutionary Guard. They don't respond precipitously. We saw something similar after the 2020 assassination of Qasem Soleimani, the head of the Quds Force. There was a bit of a pause between uh, the actual assassination and when the Iranians launched ballistic missiles at, an, at American troops based in Iraq. And so I think it wasn't entirely surprising. And in fact, you know, this was a longer period. And so it clearly demonstrated that they were thinking this through carefully. Uh, but I would actually just differ with some of the interpretations that have suggested that this was really purely symbolic, that it was designed to fail. I think that when, you know, now that we have the information about uh, the, the scope and scale of the attack, um, the missiles and drones that were used, I think it's quite clear that the Iranians intended to do damage. There's really no world in which one launches 120 ballistic missiles at a country and presumes that they will all be shot down or that they will fail. There was some, um, I think, also attempt to try to overwhelm Israel's much vaunted aerial defense systems and to test them and to see exactly how they might perform for future awareness as well. Um, so this was a sophisticated attack. It was very um, significant in terms of its size. And it's really a testament to the preparation and to the coordination that the United States and Israel did um, with other partners and allies, including the Jordanians, the British, the French, to ensure that there really was very limited damage and, and I believe only one casualty, a young girl who was badly hurt. 